because there's an art to be in a Southern Belle. You know, they don't talk about anything graphic. Everything's very demure. I have a Southern Belle girlfriend told me she had to go see the doctor because she had female problems. I'm like, it's 1990. What do you mean female problems? She's like, hey, I'm, you know, female problems. I'm like, what, you can't parallel park? You can't get credit? <laughs> They do little dainty things. Actually, all women do this. For some reason, whenever a woman reaches up and kisses a man, we raise our leg. You ever notice that? That leg just pops up. Isn't that the stupidest thing? You never see a guy do this, do you? No. You never see a guy go to work. Bob, how you doing? <laughs> so I did some research on that. It turns out that that little movement goes back to caveman days. It does. It's an automatic reflex women have developed from the days when we would kiss a man and then kick ourselves in the ass for getting involved. <laughs> I just do that joke so women can go, yay! Guys are like, I don't think that's funny, you skinny little bitch. <laughs> From the South, but my parents are European, which is pretty weird. My mother is British, and she's very proper. And every time I see her, I'm just going, proper. I walked to the house one time. I was like, Mom, I'm so hot and sweaty. Is there anything in the house to drink? And she said, Pamela, how many times must I remind you that race horses sweat and young ladies glow? <laughs> And I said, I'm sorry, Mommy. Do you think I can have something to drink? Because I'm glowing like a fucking racehorse. So said... <laughs> oh, my whole family's pretty screwed up. I have a brother who's 38. He just came out of the closet for the first time. Like, he's not gay. My dad just decided that's enough punishment. <laughs> my father is German. I went to visit him recently. He lives in Germany. I was nearly killed. I don't know if you've ever been to Germany, but this is a country where they serve you beer in liter-sized mugs and encourage you to drive as fast as possible. <laughs> I had no idea there weren't any speed limits in this country. I'm on the on-ramp to the Autobahn going, please, Jesus, just help me merge. Just help me merge. I'm in some shitty little Volkswagen Golf. Real good idea to drive a car over there. You can bench press, right? I take off. I'm doing 90 in the slow lane. Ah! A Schwinn passes me at 180. Get pulled over by the German police. Fräulein, can you walk a straight line? Uh, yes, sir. I think I can. Ah, then you need more beer? <laughs> I guess it makes sense. You pour a liter of beer in your bladder. You're going to be driving that fast as you find a fucking bathroom, man. Like a <laughs> serious alcohol problem over there. There is. And we have an alcohol problem here. And we have a drug problem in the United States, too. And it's gotten to the point where it's even affecting the wildlife. This is a true story. Four years ago in the North Georgia mountains, a bear died of cocaine. You remember that? It's in all the papers. I'm not making it up. Yeah, you remember that? That's what's great about living in the South. You don't have to write material. The shit just happens. <laughs> this is what happened. A plane flew over. It was carrying a shipment of cocaine in 80-pound bags. All right. It drops off the coke. The police recover all the cocaine. They find an empty, torn-up bag, and right next to it, a dead bear. Well, all I could think was this poor bear. After doing 80 pounds of coke. <laughs> all alone in the world. <laughs> Without a cigarette! <laughs> you know, he's freaking out. He's trying to find a payphone. Hello, boo boo. <laughs> You know, I'm feeling really paranoid. I think all the animals are talking about me, man. It's a squirrel, man! <laughs> what? Hibernate? What are you, crazy? I'll never sleep again! <laughs> they did an autopsy on the bear. It turns out he didn't ingest all the 80 pounds of coke, so I guess that means there's probably a couple of beavers out there building a hydroelectric dam. <laughs> right. I love animals. I get upset about that kind of thing. That's why I don't like hunting either, except in Wisconsin. Because the state of Wisconsin, two years ago, passed a law making it legal for blind people to hunt. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, the deer dig it. <laughs> deer walk right up to these guys. <laughs> Moo. <laughs> animals, except my cat. My cat scratched the shit out of me the other day, man. They hate getting their ears pierced. God. <laughs> Just trying to accessorize you. <laughs> she was wearing my pump. <laughs> I wanted to buy a parrot, not one of those little squawky parrots, one of those great big Amazon, you know, those exotic expensive parrots. And I nearly did until the girl at the pet shop told me that those giant parrots can live to be between 80 and 100 years old. Did you know that? Yeah, and I thought, that's too weird to have a pet that's going to outlive your ass. Yeah. <laughs> you bring him home, and he's like, one day all of this is going to be mine. 
I have a horse too. I love horses. I think these are the best pets you can get, really. Because they're the only pet that gives you that sensation of being mounted. <laughs> On this mass of rippling muscle. They start galloping and get that real kind of rocking chair, kind of pulsating action going there. They break into that lathering sweat, and there you are, perched on top of it in complete control of 1,500 pounds of raw meat, and you just don't get that with a hamster. <laughs> Guys always tell me I want to die during sex, and I'm thinking, yeah, it's good for you. <laughs> you better believe there's going to be some girl there going, don't you die yet, you bastard! Give me those paddles. <laughs> I'd like to die in my sleep, I think. A natural death sounds pretty, doesn't it? Yeah. Sounds like a commercial. A death of natural causes. Like being hit by a granola truck. <laughs> Just a good, honest crutch. <laughs> I'd hate to be murdered. That'd be really embarrassing, you know, because, well, if you don't have a great body, you know, they draw that chalk outline. <laughs> You know, on me, it's going to look like a stick, man. It's like, ah! <laughs> Police come in, gee, Sarge, somebody killed olive oil. <laughs> and then, you know, I was watching Geraldo the other day, and, and these people scared the hell out of me. They, these people came on and claimed that they died and come back to life. Yeah, you've heard these people. They all say the same thing, right? It's like, well, first I felt like I was floating out of my body. And then I felt like I was flying around the room. And then I was drawn towards this bright white light. <laughs> Which apparently means when we die, we turn into moths. <laughs> Here you are, you're living a good life. You think you're going to heaven? Now you'll be bopping your head against a porch light for eternity. You're like, oh, this sucks. Get out of here. Ow! <laughs> Trapped between a screen and a window. Help me! <laughs> So I went to church, and I'm an Episcopalian, which is pretty much the Disneyland of religions. So, okay. <laughs> we use like cliff notes of the Bible, you know? We have like a King Jim version, you know? <laughs> Instead of raining for 40 days and 40 nights, it just got really humid. <laughs> and sometimes, you know, I go for guidance, but they're so accepting, they're so non-judgmental, they don't care what you do. You can walk up to an Episcopal priest and say, Father, I am married, and yet I fornicated with someone else. And they're like, so? <laughs> Oh, was it a mammal? <laughs> yes, I have no mammals. I have no boyfriends. It's, it's terrible, too, because, you know, I don't know where to, where to meet people. And singles bars are the worst. And the thing I hate the most about singles bars, I think they're sexist. I hate what they do to men. I hate those women that walk around with the baskets of the roses for the men to buy. You guys have got to hate this. You know, because if you don't pop the three bucks, you look like a cheap jerk, you know? And it's not fair. If you're going to put men on the spot, put women on the spot. Have a guy walking around with a basket for things for women to buy for their dates. You know, just some big fat-ass guy going to some table. And we'll go, Spark plug. <laughs> Fan belt here. <laughs> I don't know how men and women ever get together at all. We're so different. God, you know, you know, the main thing is, is we've never learned to talk to each other. And it's not our fault. We would if we could. But the way we were raised since we were little kids, men were told to be a man. Right? Don't cry. Yep. That's right. You could have broken your arm when you were four years old. Your dad would be like, don't you be a wuss. <laughs> you snap that bone back in there. Don't you cry. <laughs> Doesn't that feel better? There you go. So I'll give you something to cry about, soldier. And what do they tell women? They're like, well, honey, you feel so much better if you just go upstairs and have a good long cry. <laughs> Run upstairs and cry. Cry some more. <laughs> and that's why, as adults, women become very emotional and men become snipers. <laughs> well, you never hear a women snipers, do you? No, because at the office place, the woman can go into the ladies' lounge, you know, when it starts getting tense, cry. The guy's in the front yard picking off Girl Scouts with a bazooka. <laughs> better now! I think I can talk about it! And women take advantage of the fact that it's acceptable to cry. We cry at the drop of a hat. And the frightening thing is, when women get upset, we have about 10 billion different emotions that come out of our head at the same time. And it's a little frightening for men to be around this. All right, ladies? It's like hanging around Sybil with PMS. Give them a break. There's not a man in this room tonight who hasn't had a fight with a woman who hasn't had her, hasn't had her pull this kind of shit on him. I hate you. You make me sick. I want you to get your shit and get out. It. 
I'm gay, okay? <laughs> That's the thing, man. Women, we are so screwed up. When we have no idea what we want. That's the biggest complaint I hear from men about women is you women do not know what you want. And gentlemen, you're absolutely right. We haven't got a clue. We thought we, thought we knew what we wanted in the 80s going into the 90s. We wanted a sensitive man. A man who's not afraid to share his feelings. A man who's not afraid to cry. Yeah, like you're going to respect your husband if he comes home from work. It's like, hi, honey, how was your day? <laughs> you know... I have been at that job for eight years. <laughs> I put in like, you know, 50, 60 hour a week. And I went in today. And I asked for a promotion, you know. I can't talk. <laughs> what you got? Like, my God, what a wuss. Take a mite all. Get out of here. This has been terrific. Thank you very much. Now, it's my pleasure to bring on the second half of the show, my brand new best new friend from Houston, Houston's Chocolate Kiss, ladies and gentlemen, Thea Vidal. How about a hand for Pam Stone? Isn't she great? You had a good day today? Yeah. Mine suck. <laughs> Been spending time with my girlfriend. She's getting on my nerves. You see, she's got two children, and her youngest is finally going to school. So she calls me up crying now every day because she thinks she's getting old. Every day it's, my baby going to school. <laughs> My baby going to school. My baby going to school. I'm getting... Oh! People, I have four children. I'm waking up every morning at five o'clock going, everybody get the fuck out of my house. <laughs> and one of my kids goes to kindergarten, and I hate kindergarten. So that's where you send your child to go to draw 1,500 pictures a week of shit that you don't even know what it is. <laughs> and if you ask them what it is, they get pissed off. And it's not your fault that you don't know a tree is pink and purple with 15 legs. <laughs> but you know what's really bad? They show that same picture to their grandmother and the bitch knows what it is. <laughs> yeah, I got four kids and you can rent one if you'd like. Hellfire, damnation, pestilence, and scurvy. And those are their Christian names. <laughs> And before I go on the road like any good mother would, I try to go to the toy store, try to pick up something a little extra for my baby. I went to the toy store, they had this little cell search showing me this little cricket doll. You seen her, talking about, and she tells a knock knock joke for only $86. <laughs> I said, for $86, I want this bitch to tell my daughter about a period, part the car, do the laundry. <laughs> I want my money's worth. <laughs> They tried to sell me a black Barbie, but I wouldn't buy her because her lips weren't that big. <laughs> and another thing, Barbie is 30 years old. She has a house in Malibu, a Ferrari, a Corvette, and the bitch don't even have a job. <laughs> what does Barbie do for a living? I think she's a high-priced hoe. <laughs> Why does she need Ken? He don't even have a dick. You live in his head right there, baby. Look at his head. It says, made it time on. Right there, baby. Ask me. If she was smart, she'd be with G.I. Joe. Because he got a job. <laughs> 
<laughs> she get a black G.I. Joe, they can call him G.I. Joe Mama, but anyhow. <laughs> My children, do you have children? You know, I'm not the only parent in this room. My children fight a lot. Just fight a lot. That's like nature's way of saying I should have given head, isn't it? <laughs> I'm not lying. You have four children, you look at Dick a whole different way. You just, uh... <laughs> and I feel like this is something that only mothers would understand. But tell the truth, ladies, if you have little people home all day long, you know they fall down, get little scrapes and bobos on their knees and shit. You kiss it, put some spit on it, they happy little something. <laughs> They're happy all day long until their daddy come home. And that's when they start going, Daddy, 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 look at this. Daddy, 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 look at this. And that's when your man turns into super father, isn't it? <laughs> Woman, why did you let him fall? <laughs> And let him fall, I pushed him down. <laughs> you don't like what I do, take his ass to work with you when you go. <laughs> I bet your body slapped him against the wall a couple times. <laughs> and before I came up here, my baby talked back to me. Yes, he did. And it was over something simple. He asked me for a dollar. And I said, scurvy, baby. <laughs> Money doesn't grow on trees. And he looked at me and said, no shit, Sherlock, I wouldn't be fucking with your broke ass, I'd be out in the yard. <laughs> so I shot him. <laughs> Cause you gonna eat my food and talk shit to me too. <laughs> On a more personal note, I was married for 10 years. And I can honestly tell you ladies, after being married for 10 years, I rate sex right up there over cleaning the oven and defrosting the refrigerator. <laughs> it's a dirty job, but somebody's got to do it. So that's why I hired a maid. <laughs> Paid up 10 bucks extra to keep the nigga off of me. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I guess I've been up here long enough for you to tell about looking at me that I am a Reuben S. woman. <laughs> do you know what that means? Fat, sexy lady, thank you so much. <laughs> And I don't mind being this big, except like when I go to restaurants, because people stare at you and go, Ooh, Let's see how much food this fail gonna eat. <laughs> but I tell them to go to hell, because all you can eat means all you can eat, and I can eat it all. <laughs> so I just pull my chair to that salad bar and say, come on, share my trough with me. <laughs> Worst of all, all my girlfriends are skinny little blonde hair, blue eyed, and infants like a Pam Stone. And I take Pam shopping with me. Cause she always say stuff like, I like it, Phil, but it makes you look a little fat. <laughs> <laughs> well, Pam, I weigh 235 pounds. I'm gonna look a little fat. <laughs> Worst of all, she has the nerve to ask me to go jogging with them. You can tell I'm built for this, can't you? <laughs> my girlfriend Debbie says, Come on, Thea, let's go jogging. Your body will be one with the universe, and your karma will be high, and that's of all your body will talk to you. And she was right, child. My body did talk to me and said, Bitch, please sit down now. Here, you're going to kill her. <laughs> and I would have jogged further with him, but my tit hit me in the eye, and that shit hurt. <laughs> You don't know people, this is a 44D, this is like getting shot with a Magnum. <laughs> and, because, <laughs> and because I do tend to dress rather fashionably, I got to go to this new full figure shop called Moo Cow, get your fat ass in here. <laughs> oh, you laughing, but you don't have no titties at all. You got a little speed bump titty. I think Barbie's titties is bigger than yours. Maybe Ken. You got little eggs that are never gonna hatch. And what's so bad, your man is laughing at your ass. But that's all right, baby. He won't be laughing tonight, will he? Cause he gonna want some pussy ain't that right. You see him tonight talking about, baby, give me some pussy. No, fuck that nigga bitch you was laughing with. <laughs> but 
I'm gonna tell you something, Tiny, because we friends. <laughs> Sometimes being well endowed is not all it's cracked up to be. You know what I'm talking about? Guess you wouldn't. Because <laughs> one time, it's a tender moment, I ain't bushing. One time, Tiny. <laughs> Don't laugh at the handicap. <laughs> one time, Tiny. I was laying on the floor on my side exercising. <laughs> it's a tender moment, I said. <laughs> and remember I told you I have a little baby? <laughs> and my baby had on those striped white walking shoes. <laughs> you know those hot top white walking shoes? And he stepped on my nipple. <laughs> And when he came to, he was five. <laughs> I forgot that fucker was my son. You know what I'm talking about? Kind of like getting your dick caught in your zipper, mister. Keep up with us. Oh, God. I got to tell you, because we're good friends now. I just got divorced. <laughs> that ain't funny! <laughs> and it's breaking my heart. Because I know deep down inside I was a good wife. <laughs> I was! <laughs> I cooked, I cleaned, I bred children, I swallowed, I was a terrific wife. <laughs> Homeboy's eyes got big as Oreo cookies when I said that. He looking at his woman, she going, don't start no shit. I don't give a damn what she said. Don't start, no shit. <laughs> Ladies, be honest. You can go to any club right now, and you will see some man standing by the bar in a designer suit like he's posing for GQ magazine. You've seen him having your girls walk around like... <laughs> <laughs> Body by Nautilus, brain by Mattel. <laughs> and he's standing from the real man, the true man, the man with the hairy chest and the gold chain. And the real man comes up to you and says, Hi, babe. I'm 27. I'm single. I have a brand new condo and a 1991 custom designed Porsche out in the parking lot. How does that sound to you, babe? <laughs> sound like you got a lot of bills, son. <laughs> I'm looking for somebody I got this shit already paid for. <laughs> real man buys you a drink. He thinks now you're supposed to go to bed with him. What prostitute in the world you know go to bed with somebody for $3.25? <laughs> Let's say we decide to go to bed with a real man and you start to kiss his chest. Have you ever noticed that he starts pushing your head down like this, like X marks the spot? Give me a wig your kids. And black men love for you to give them head, but child, you can't get a nigga to lick a stamp. <laughs> the men are going, the ninja bitches here. <laughs> well, before I go, I want to leave with something to think about. Because <laughs> I'm a profound thinking woman. <laughs> See, some of you men think I'm a feminist. I'm not. I'm a liberated woman. There's a difference. See, feminists want balls. Liberated women just want to collect them. Show them to our friends. <laughs> Ladies, make the men spend money. So they take you to Burger King and you give them something, they're going to talk about that. <laughs> now, here's my advice for the men. If a man has good credit, a woman will fake an orgasm. <laughs> Don't lie, lady. Because I was dating my husband. He wasn't no bigger than this. But he had an outstanding line of credit. We'd be in the bed. I'd be going, Whoa! Baby, baby. Whoa! Can we go to the mall now? Thank you, Ben Lonifon. How about a 
best friend, my best friend, Pam Stone. <laughs>